We want to thank everyone. Um, I'm just really surprised that I'm even here this year. Uh, caught me off guard quite a bit, but uh, I, everybody's support from from the first year, uh, and I want to say thank you to the 20 percent that voted for me the first year. <laughs> that, that kept me on the ballot so I could work my way up slowly. Um, so uh, thank you to those guys, and uh, thanks for everyone for supporting us. Um, you know, we all appreciate it, uh, especially me and Edgar, guys that have been on the ballot for a few years. And uh, it's, it's, it's a tremendous honor. It's, it's, you know, it's a long time since I sat in a press conference with all these cameras flashing in New York. Um, but uh, it's, just, it's just as exciting as it was the first time I came, and um, I'm thrilled to, to be uh, considered with, with the other great players in the game, with the guys I'm sitting with, uh, and, and uh, thanks. Thanks to everyone, and congratulations to my teammate and my new teammate, and and uh, to the Halliday family, and uh, and it's just it's a great honor. Thank you. Do you have one favorite moment, accomplishment, memory on the field that sticks out to you as you sit here today? The relief appearance in the postseason game uh, in front of him, um, that that the now manager hit a home run for us and won the game. Uh, that was. You know, I'd never been asked to do that before. Uh, it was, you know, it's game seven of the, of the ALCS, and the place is packed. It's Yankee Stadium. And, and, and I have to jog from the bullpen to the game mound in the midst of the game, and I never, I don't do that. I walk in before everybody's there. People haven't got in from work yet. That's when I go out and, and, I, and I walk or jog to the mound from the dugout, not from the bullpen. So uh, to get in there and do that, uh, with my heart pounding in my chest and being able to and, and be effective and get a strikeout and a double play to get out of that inning and give us a chance and pitch a couple more innings and and give us a chance it's just it was that was a big part and then and then obviously the very last day of my career um, in Fenway Park um, we got rained out the day before uh, when I woke up the the ceiling and the the clouds were probably 300 feet off the ground. It looked like it was going to rain again. We're supposed to play a split doubleheader to end the season. And, uh, and Girardi asked me which game I wanted to pitch. And I said, well, if we're going to play one, I got to pitch that one. So, uh, and I got to pitch. I, I, I threw well and, and ended up winning my 20th game, the only time I won 20 and, 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 that, and the last day of my career. So that was, those two things really stick out um, uh, for me anyway. Those are, those are my two pretty memorable moments. I did a lot of almost things, I think, <laughs> people would say. Uh, I had a couple almost no hitter, you know, I had a couple shots at no hitters, a perfect game. Uh, I almost won 20 a couple other seasons. Uh, I almost won the World Series. Um, I almost didn't make it to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I did, so. Um, yeah, that's my almost story. <laughs> I can live with the other almost because uh, I get to sit up here now. Uh, my minor league career was, uh, was interesting, I would say. Um, I, I was only there for a year. Um, I started in double A in Hagerstown, Maryland. Um, uh, first bus trip, I got my luggage run over by the bus. <laughs> so that's how it started for me. Um, first game I actually pitched. It rained so hard they couldn't get the tarp on the field. Uh, so I pitched two innings, and so I didn't, it didn't really count. So I got two debuts in the minors, which doesn't happen all the time. And, uh, you know, they just let me pitch, though. And, and uh, they tried to teach me a few things, and I talked to some older players. And, and that's kind of how you do it when you're young. You just, you just try to learn whatever you can and let some of the older guys help you. And, and uh, that's all I tried to do. And, and uh, I got lucky and got an opportunity at a young age. And, and uh, when they gave me a chance, I did okay, and, and I got to stay in the big leagues, and that's pretty much how it happened. Tyler Kepner with the New York Times. Uh, Mike and Edgar, we touched a little bit on Edgar's battles with Mariano, but Mike, as you mentioned, he handled you pretty well, too. Um, you obviously had a ton of weapons to go that's after. That's why he's sitting up here, yeah, Tyler. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you had a ton of weapons to go after hitters with. What frustrated you about Edgar, and what, from a technical standpoint, made him such a tough out and Edgar, if you talk about Mike too. Well, I I think, um, you know, the the guys the guys for me 
and, and, and for, for Mo and for Doc and the, guy, the guys that are willing to use the field from the left field line to the right field line, who don't want to pull the ball all the time, who don't want to hit the ball off the fence all the time, who just, the phrase is they, they take what we give them. And if I throw him down and away, and he's going to hit a line drive to right field. If I try to throw him down an inning, it's a line drive to left field. You know, he, he just, and he had that ability. He saw the ball that well, and it didn't matter what I messed. I could, I could have a different, a different order of pitches. I could have tried fastball first, breaking ball first, got ahead in the count, got behind in the count. It didn't matter. When you're, when you're successful and, and as good a hitter as, as he was, then you just, listen, I'm going to throw it in the middle and hope he hits it really hard right to somebody because if I try real hard and he still gets a hit, then is this going to make me mad? So, <laughs> and honestly, sometimes you do that. I say, listen, I'm going to throw a sinker right down the middle, man. Just hit it in the first two pitches and let's move on because you're going to get a hit anyway. <laughs> so, and, and that's the truth. And, and so, I mean, I don't know what my numbers were against him. I mean, we all know what Mo's numbers were against him because we brought it up when we got here. <laughs> And he only had one pitch. I mean, come on. <laughs> he talks about minimizing his pitches. He had one pitch. <laughs> cut her in, cut her away. Cut her in, cut her away. Hang up. <laughs> he threw one sinker his whole life. Yeah, <laughs> one time. But you, know, you, don't, you, don't, you don't do what he could do and, and frustrate us as starters and, and pitchers like, like he could if you weren't willing to just – take our best stuff and put it wherever you wanted to put it and not trying to do too much with the ball. And that's, I mean, that's how I survived for as long as I did. Guys try to hit the ball off the fence too much and I get in the ground ball to short or fly ball to center and that's, that's how I survived. And Edgar didn't do that. He just took a line drive to right field and it's worked for him and it drove in a ton of runs and, and like I said, it frustrated me to, to death. So that's why, that's why he's sitting up here. He did that to everybody. Uh, I actually... I never really stood in the outfield and ever and never talked to Doc about pitching. Uh, I, I I know I, he had he had I just thought tremendous stuff. I think he had a uh, very heavy ball, um, and when he when he learned how to sink it and cut it, it really changed it really changed how he pitched and how effective he was and what he could do. And I mean I I bump into him once in a while in the weight room and and uh, you know he's more than focused on what he's trying to get ready for the next turn or whatever was going on. And, and uh, you know, I just, I never really had a chance to sit down and talk to him, but, but obviously he was, he was there to, he was there to pitch the whole game every time he took the ball and, and, and it was his turn and he was going to, he was going to uh, stay in there as long as he possibly could and, and, and try to really stick it to you. And, and he did it a lot. And, and uh, it was, it was impressive to watch him throw. For all three of you, are you surprised at how much the way the game has played has changed since your retirement? The rise of relief pitchers, the lessening emphasis of starting pitchers, the huge increase in shifts. And is that good for the game, do you think, or good for the fans, or good for the players? We don't have enough time to talk about that. <laughs> I'm I'm a starting I was a starting pitcher so it's it's the game's changed the game always evolves it always has uh, I'm not sure I love the way it's changed lately but that's just the nature of it um yeah I, if you can't as as a starter if you can't get deep in games you, you lose opportunities to win games um and uh you won't pitch as many innings there's a whole list of things that happen so I I'm as a starter uh, I'm I'm not a huge fan of the way it's going, but but you know I'm not the one making the decisions. I'm I'm an old guy now who just played a bunch of years ago, and and uh, that's that's just my opinion of it. But we could talk a long time about about how the game is changing. Obviously, the 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 situation is unique. I almost split my career down the middle with with two organizations. Uh, I told you yesterday I can't. Right now I couldn't sit here and choose one over the other. They're both instrumental to me sitting here. Uh, so I think we've got, we've got a little bit of time here to, to talk it over with the, uh, with the Hall of Fame and with the people there. And, and I think all of us put together will come to, a, will come to the right decision, whatever it is. Um, but uh, as I sit here right now, no, I have not decided. And uh, thank you for the question. Um, 
and I did want to bring one more thing up. If 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 he's buying dinner for somebody and for me, for you, yes, sir. and and a somebody's a well, I don't know, but who? <laughs> how many times did I set you up so you could sit up here? <laughs> I think I'm really close to having the most. He saved the most games for me. It's close. I think Pettit might have passed this when he came. So I, you know, I think you you take me someplace. That's what I think. Olive Garden. Olive Garden. That's right. We're going Olive Garden. <laughs> We're going Italian, man. Let's go. <laughs>